Daryl Hempel from Silverseed Farm explains how natural resources influence the acquiring of his farm, where he farms with tomatoes and beef cattle. He also explains the importance of farming near a market or retail sector for distribution purposes. Daryl explains the risk that a saturated market has on product distribution. It is explained how the knowledge that a supplier has can change the complete outcome of a farming practice. This is Silver Seed Farm. Um, I've been here three years. I farmed tomatoes. I started 23 years ago, all open field. And then about 15 years ago, we started and, uh, under protection, hydroponics. I was one of the first to start in the East London area, and it's grown from there. I originally grew in the Ganubi area. We have moved out by development there, and we've started here afresh, as I say, three years ago. I started um, right in the beginning as a schoolboy growing vegetables. During school, I lost my dad, I was 15, and I, had to, I was the only son, I had to make a living for my family. Um, and we started doing all sorts of vegetables, and it just wasn't paying, doing you know, a bit of beetroot, carrots, spinach. And then an old friend of mine suggested growing tomatoes, and that's where it all started, by one hectare, making enough to grow the second hectare, and so on. Well, I wanted to do beef, as well as tomatoes and other crops. So the biggest thing to look for is decent soil and water. If not enough water, potential to produce more water, in other words, build dams. And yeah, the climate is another thing. It's got to be in a frost-free frost -free area. Uh, roads, good road network, close enough to, to markets. And yes, it depends where you're marketing to. The market locally at BCM is too small for all our growers. If we had to put all our tomatoes into this area, we'd all go bankrupt. It's far too small. Um, we have to send out of town and find other markets, be it fresh produce markets or direct to, to chain stores. I personally supply fruit and veg cities um, in the Eastern Cape. If I have an excess, I send down to the Western Cape. Over and above that, I do put on the fresh produce markets and that being the ones with the best price. So what you would do is contact them in the mornings and see who offers the best price. The biggest pr uh, price indicators for us are the Northern Transvaal. They are big growers and they dominate the price. We run at a total loss. We draw a line at a point where we say, okay, that is far too below cost. We just dump. Now in January, I was dumping on a day, seven to 10 tons of tomatoes. Giving to pig farmers, giving to ch uh, charity organizations, old age homes, whoever wanted tomatoes, I welcome them to fetch. It just didn't pay us to transport and market. To give you an idea, the Durban market was the highest price in the country at 15 rand a box. Your box cost five rand. So you're left with 10 rand. Then there's 14 and a half per percent commission off. There's still transport. So it just doesn't make sense to, to even pack those tomatoes. When I started, I went to neighbours that were doing tomatoes and a lot of them became good friends. They helped me being a youngster starting off. And when I could get out of town, I organised with some seed reps to visit other areas just to see how things were done elsewhere in the country. And that's how I built up knowledge. And it was trial and error. I bumped my head a lot of times. I was helped by the chemical guys, the seed reps, and then as far as my staff goes, I've trained them from my knowledge, made sure that they did things the right way and, and the way I preferred it. A lot of it is according to Europe cap, um, as far as chemical usages, uh, protective clothing, all the things that are, are needed. What taught us a lot for 12 years, I grew for Woolworths, and they audited us, audited us every six months, uh, our pack shed, our growing areas. So that was, they, as everybody knows, are very strict and sticky, and that taught us a lot. We've looked at it, to put up a processing plant cost big money, and you need to utilize that plant 12 months out of the year to make it viable. And to have it run two months on, three, four months off, it just doesn't make sense and it's not viable profitably. The problem is what that processing plant will pay you 
will also not warrant it. I know f in the PE um, cookhouse area, they're doing processing tomatoes as we speak. And what they get paid per ton, you need big, big volumes to make it worthwhile. And that's being processed at the Kucha plant uh, for puree. So you need big, big volumes. And we talk about 60 hectares plus per indig individual farmer. So it's just not, it just can't work here. Rates and other government services generally tend to be difficult to administer. We have problems with the rates, um, exemption, and um, we're supposed to be getting reduced rates. When you go and inquire, same story. People can't help you, come back tomorrow, and that's the way. So yeah, there are little things in various areas where they could improve. Production costs, um, your total well, cost, uh, disease control, just get everything, all the knowledge you possibly can first before you even put a foot into it. You can never know too much. After 23 years of growing tomatoes, I still learn every day and there's a lot still to learn. Mdanzani Hydroponic Tomato Project. Ludovica Sochi is the project manager of Nets Africa. She spearheads the Mdanzani Hydroponics Project. Ludovica explains the importance of creating a support network structure. Hey, my name is Ludovica Sochi and I'm the project manager of Nets Africa program. Nets Africa program is, um, is a program funded by the Italian Ministry of Affairs and the regional government of Tuscany. And it aims at supporting the South African government in formulating policies and strategies in order to alleviate poverty. And it's Africa just wanted to strengthen the impact of a, an already existing project that was in place between the, co the cooperatives and Buffalo City Metro Municipality. So Buffalo, Buffalo City was supporting those cooperatives much before the Nets Africa came in. Nets Africa wanted only to consolidate and strengthen the impact on this project. The, the problem that was identified before Nets Africa um, came in was basically that um, th this cooperative um, was having a problem in reaching the sustainability because um, they had to they had to go um, they had to rely on an outsourced um, packaging company in order to pack their production their tomato production and so this was this company was charging too much so they were not able at the end of the day to get a profit out of their production. So through Nets Africa, in partnership with Buffalo City Metro Municipality, we were able to um, identify those needs and um, a pack shed facility was built, a tomato packaging machine was purchased and this facility in, is owned by the municipality and the cooperatives will manage the packaging facility and will have the um, possibility to use the packaging machine in order to downsize the cost and to get uh, a bigger profit. Even before Nets Africa and through Nets Africa, there was a specific resource that was mentoring continuously these cooperatives. But uh, through the training that was delivered by Forteo, we also included some session of mentoring. And Forteo and University of Forteo committed in, um, in continuing the mentoring to these cooperatives. Something else that I would like to add also, which is I think is important, that through Nets Africa, we created those synergies with other de development agencies, such as SIDA, such as the Department of Economic Development, DIDIA. And through the involvement of different stakeholders, we were able to, um, to create some network that can then support the cooperatives once we will, once we will leave. My name is Vuiseka Pete. Our project's name, Buffalo City Organic Producers, was 16 members from different units and wards. We register our, our cooperative. 
We started at 12.9 uh, with assistance of municipality Buffalo City. They give us uh, the mentor. Our product, we sell our product in fresh produce at East London, Wilsonia. And our, our market is locally and hawkers and our community. Mr. Bonifini, the pack shirt manager here at North Africa. The, the, the pack shirt, the, its function is to, 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 for the, to find the market for the, the, all the co-ops that are here in Tanzania and all the buffalo in, in, in all, and to find the secure market for, the, for them so that they can produce and have the, the, the target market for the, for the produce that they are being produced, the producing. And um, the, how the pack shirt will, will, will market the tomatoes for them, for them and then pay them the money, pay the co-ops, which is the, farmer, the, the farmers that are being produced inside the pack shirt. The, 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 the purpose of the pack shirt is to, to, to support them so that it can be easy for them. They're not paying more to, 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 for the produce. And the pack shirt brought the, the truck for them so that they can easily transport the produce from the, from the co-ops here up to this pack shirt and from the pack shirt to the, to the, to the, to the, to the retailer.